Hello humans, welcome to this, our first episode where we start looking at miniature pyrotechnics. And what do you know? Everyone seems to have arrived for this one. I think there's something about explosions, right, that draws us, that draws a crowd. And I think that's probably because we don't really see them very often in, in real life, which is a good thing. Mostly they're still reserved for blockbusters that maintain that to really solve any serious problem, you need some explosions. But many of the huge devastating explosions and fireballs that we've seen in movies might not be quite as big as you think. Many movies have used explosive effects in models and miniatures throughout the years to stunning effect, often cutting seamlessly with live action. Hollywood masters like Thane Morris and Joe Viscosal are credited for many of the most convincing and impressive miniature explosions ever seen. In the original Die Hard, John McClane kindly returns Hans Gruber's detonators by use of an office chair and a lift shaft. This lift shaft was in fact only 12 feet tall and was a forced perspective miniature to make the shaft appear much deeper. A pyro charge was detonated from beneath and the resulting fireball was captured completely in camera. Thane Morris used a low temperature benzoyl peroxide powder for this fireball effect, which allowed the miniature to survive a few retakes without it being destroyed. Likewise, the Nakatomi Plaza rooftop explosions were also miniature, including a radio controlled helicopter for the scene. A version of this helicopter miniature was also rigged to fall from the sky and explode when consumed in the blast. Joe Viscoso could be considered the real-life Luke Skywalker in that it was actually he who blew up the Death Star in A New Hope. Using suspended pyro charges that were filmed from below, he created the effect of a large zero-gravity explosion, where the embers and sparks spread out evenly and flew towards the camera in truly epic style. Until the <sighs> special edition added that ring shockwave effect. Throughout the years, Joe and his team created some of the most iconic movie explosions, including 1996's Independence Day and the destruction of the White House. In that film, he also used slanting miniature sets to create rolling plumes of fire to engulf whole cities, a technique he revisited again for the movie Team America, World Police. In more recent years, studios such as Kerner FX have further pushed the envelope in miniaturizing pyro effects for films, such as these impressive examples from Terminator Salvation. Here you can see how a combination of miniatures and precise control of pyrotechnic effects can create very realistic results that appear much bigger in scale. Today we're just going to be scratching the surface of pyro effects for miniatures, and hopefully explain how these effects can be used as effects elements. Oh, and don't worry, we will definitely be revisiting this subject in future episodes. Now, we take health and safety very, very seriously here, and I know a lot of our episodes are tutorials of how to do things. That's really not what this is. This is a demonstration, and we strongly encourage you not to try this at home, and certainly not indoors. We're conducting these tests in a controlled environment with professionals who know what they're doing. But before we get started, if you're enjoying the content, please don't forget to smash that like button. All right, JP. Hello. We're going to blow some stuff up. Well, we're not going to sort of actually blow any particular thing up, right? We're going to make explosions. Yes. Yes. OK, so say, you know, we want to make a really tasty elements package, let's say, of, uh, of explosions. That would be pretty sweet. How might we go about this? <laughs> well, yes, I mean, this is a really good opportunity to test miniature pyro, yeah. meaning pyro effects or explosion effects tailored more for using with miniatures or models. So creating the look of a larger scale explosion, but keeping it small. Yeah. So we can, we can film it at a high speed or we can film it within the confines of the studio quite safely. Um, and this is a really good way of testing it by going through a few different materials. Right, okay. We're after things like a nice fireball mm. or we're after lots of sparks or something that yes that looks bigger in scale than it actually is. Yeah. And that usually means more texture, more detail, uh, more variation rather than just a big flash. Right. So that's what we will get from a mixture of these powders. Right, OK. So how do we create these explosions without losing body parts? Usually it's a good idea to start with 
small amounts of material. I think the wise choice being that we're indoors is to use powder-based effects okay. rather than gas or liquid fuel such as gasoline, petrol. Right. Liquid fuels tend to burn with residual spillages and things like that and likewise gas, any unburnt gas that we'd have in our charges mm. or in our effects can build up over time and right. be nasty. Right. So for today's use, we're going to be focused more on powders. Okay. And one of the main advantages of using powder-based pyrotechnics is they tend to be very quick burning or very quick acting within the air. So the majority of the effect is going to be dispersed in the air itself. So by the time any particles hit the floor, they are not Lit. There'll be a few little. I mean, yeah, there'll be a few little burning yeah, residue bits. Okay, okay. But uh, yeah, but on the whole, they'll they'll be reacting within the air itself. Yeah. So, okay, so I assume we've got a variation here. Yes. So we've got a wide selection of powders that we can use for this type of effects. Today, I've just focused on a handful. Some are metallic-based powders. Okay. Uh, some are organic-based powders. For uh, the hippies. That we can that we can use in different quantities, different mixtures that will give us different effects. So we're not actually using explosive powders per se. We're using right. powders in conjunction with what's called a lifting charge, okay. which is a way to disperse these powders in the air right. and burn them. Right. So these powders in themselves are not explosive per se. You'll actually see that the, the effect is developing within the air. And what's actually happening is these powders are burning up in the air very, very quickly. And we can actually mix different quantities and different mixtures and ratios right. to, to give different results. I think the objective of, of today is to try and replicate the look of a larger explosion, but using materials that can do that for us on a smaller scale. So we can keep it safe and we can film it in a more controlled way at higher frame rates to give the impression of a larger scale explosion. Nice. Right, well, we've got a couple of things and actually Rai has brought his new baby. Uh, so we're gonna get that out and it's gonna be a little bit of a shoot off actually between Canon and Black Magic. who knew? Who? So have you had a look at this on the settings and stuff? Today is going to be the actual like first day that I uh, play with this little bad boy. Right. C300 Mark III. Mark III, baby! While Rai gets familiar with his fancy new camera, I'm off to set up our black drape background. So we're using these chunky Americano stands because we can get a good height with these. Because we're rigging our charge quite high up, we want to be able to get our drape nice and high if we need to. So I'm going to hang the drape on a scaffold pole using these Big Ben clamps. So these are specifically to put into heavy duty stands. You wrap that around there, and then you clamp your scaffold pole on, and then we can hang our drape from that so it's like industrially solid so you can put good weight on there. So we've just got our drape up to about the height that we need it. Uh, and then I'm just going to use some of these to basically pull the whole thing taut. Don't want his little curves and things in it. So these are really handy to just get it nice and taut. Now our drape's at a good height. JP and I just need to figure out our overhead rig. Okay. This so basically, through. ideally, I just need to kind of mount this this little pulley onto the the scaff, right? Mm -hmm. So I could okay. Maybe if you come this side of that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okie day. And then thread that through. Because I can literally just yeah, I can just pass that. And yeah. Pass it through. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Nice. All right. Big ladder. Big ladder time. <laughs> Gonna use a knuckle to tie this off once we're sort of happy with our height of our rig. But then obviously what's nice is we can then just adjust heights, let it in and then and then hold it in place with this. You happy with that Japes? Yeah. yeah. You've got all of these parts in here which are for different size spigots and arms and things like that. Um, but also what's nice is behind it you've got a rubberized seal part there. So that's actually mainly for fixing frames but it's quite nice, you can just use it as a little crush your rope and tie it off. So talk us through what we've got here. This is a 
yeah, what, how would you call it? A platform? Well, yeah, I guess. Something, yeah. rigging platform. Um, for our purposes today, it, we're just going to not utilize all its functions. Mm. This is for another episode mm. upcoming. Uh -huh. uh, so we're just going to use this today as a way of positioning up our receiver box for our pyro charges. Right. So this is going to activate the charge. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So this is going to supply the, the, the power and the signal to detonate our charges. And the way we've got it rigged on this line just makes for a very easy way of adjusting the height relative in frame and feeding through the wires and let the charges suspend in air. What we're going to be calling it is an air burst effect, if okay. you like. So the charges will be going off away from the ground at a certain height. Yeah. So we're maximizing the most amount of spread. As an element, they're very useful because you can use them for multiple uses. You know, an obvious one would be an explosion in the sky or something like that, that would be literally an air burst, an explosion happening, a, a plane being hit or a right. ship being hit. But you can also use these elements in other ways to simulate ground explosions and things. Sure. It's just making the element itself a bit more flexible. So we're not seeing that the explosion has been cut off or bouncing yeah. off or being deflected by a yeah. hard surface. It's not sort of quite so geographically specific that limits where you could use it. Exactly. All right, let's do it. So camera time, let's get our cameras set up. So you want raw, because JP does everything raw. It's worth mentioning here that Rise Camera is currently one of only a handful of models that can shoot 4K raw at 120 frames a second. In the past, this type of frame rate at this high resolution would have had to have been shot using a specialist high-speed camera, such as a Photosonics or Phantom camera. 120, nice. So with all of our safety checks done, we move back to a safe distance with our trusty fire extinguisher at the ready. We're all set to do a run of tests, starting off with small amounts of powder in our charges, then adjusting the mixtures and amounts as we go. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. That looked cool. Yeah. That was more creamy. Mm. Yeah. That was a good, good shout. Yeah. She's about to die, I think, but we can squeeze one more up. Um, okay, cool. Camera speed. Yeah. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. There's gonna be Pokemon fans out there. This is like a Moltres, basically. That shows my age <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> Cause that was... but yeah, it literally is like a little phoenix, isn't it? You've got his head there, his chest, wings, and then yeah. tail. What's the kind of like expression when something is extremely fierce and dangerous, but when you take the time to look at it, it's quite beautiful. I don't know what the expression for that would be. Pete? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, you're describing Pete. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. This is just so it's really Pete. Yeah, yeah. This is really Pete. <laughs> okay, and firing in three, two, one. Three, two, one. Okay, firing in three, two, one. Okay, three, two, one. Yep. 
firing in three, two, one. Now we decided to mix things up and fire some more directional charges. We dress one of our wooden plinths in black drape and set our charges on top. Since our charges are now going to detonate in a more skyward direction, Rai reorientates his camera 90 degrees to maximise the effect being captured in maximum resolution. So, I guess the idea is to... Uh, it kills me to say it, but put the camera into bloody portrait mode because the bombs are going to go up. So, yeah, going to have to try and change the orientation of the camera. Hey, um, these all look great on stories. Yeah, 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 yeah. That, that is true, that is true. <laughs> right, so basically I'm going to take this plate off and then shift it so it's that way. And then hopefully when I tilt the camera down, I can slide it back on like this and then the camera will be like that. So all filmmakers should have one of these, a Leatherman. Let's see if it works. Slide it on. Boom. Boom. Days, it worked. Yep. And now the idea is to go like this. Yes. And now we're shooting in portrait. <laughs> it's not for Instagram, Ryan, it's okay. <laughs> okay, all right then. Cameras, speed. Okay, firing in three, two, one. in three, two, one. Yeah, that was more fire. <laughs> <laughs> yep. It's a shame it didn't come back in into the into frame. Firing in three, two, one. Yeah. <laughs> oh. And then down. Oh. 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 We, got, we got a comet out of it as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Speed. Okay, firing in three, two, one. There we go. Here JP's rigged some charges that look equally terrifying and hilarious. Anyone else getting Nintendo vibes? <laughs> These are the same small charges just inserted into polystyrene balls. JP drilled a hole to set a charge inside in hope of creating more of a bursting effect at the explosion, with the outer shell of the ball creating some nice chunky debris. Two, one. <laughs> 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 that thing went flying, whatever that was. Like, yeah, yeah. you can see it, like, getting all the way over there. Firing in three, two, one. Whoa, I thought the heat. Bomb strength, though. It gave off heat. Yeah, that gave off some heat. Nice, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah.
Well, that was fun and safe. I hope that this really kind of demonstrated to you, A, that we're very safe professionals, but also the way that different frame rates and these different powdered textures can create really realistic looking pyro. <laughs> As I was saying, I hope that was a good demonstration for you to give you a sense of how different frame rates and different powder mixtures can really help to sell a really tiny explosion as a really big one. And don't worry, we're definitely going to be coming back to this because, you know, we've got a few other things that, um, that need to be exploded. So I hope you've enjoyed it. This is Tommy for In Camera. See you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>